Good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you for Monday morning devotions as we uh, now are continuing through the book of Judges. And, uh, and last week, and even the Saturday before we did, the <clears throat> sections uh, in the book of Judges on Gideon. We learned about Gideon, how God called him, how God used him, his hesitancy, his, um, his work uh, to deliver Israel from the Midianites. And today... Uh, we are now in the story of Bimelech, which is connected to Gideon. So we'll see what happens right after the death of Gideon in Israel, in this family. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of turmoil, um, like Pastor Nudor said the other day. Um, this is where we get to the less fun stuff, and, uh, and we see the, uh, the brokenness that happens in the midst of uh, God's people and what happens in so many different ways when we try to um, take God's power as our own. So, um, as we uh, get a sense of people trying to rule and, uh, and be king, as we see here in, uh, in Abimelech, we're going to sing about God as king. And uh, we're going to go to the very uh, first hymn that is in the Lutheran service book. So this is the season of Advent. We're not quite to Advent yet, but this is a good hymn. Uh, there, there are like no hymns in our hymnal that are really based on anything from the book of Judges. So Pastor Nudorf and I are just picking things, you know, like, oh, this, is a, this you know, has a, some thematic connection. Or this is the antithesis of what's happening in our reading today. That's this hymn. So we're going to sing number 331, The Advent of Our King. The advent of our King, our prayers must now employ, and we must hymns of welcome sing in strains of holy joy. The everlasting Son incarnate deigns to be Himself a servant's form puts on to set his servants free. O Zion's daughter, rise to meet your lowly king. Nor let your faithless heart despise the peace he comes to bring. As judge on clouds of light, he soon will come again, and his true members all unite with him in hand to reign. Before the dawning day, let sin's dark deeds be gone, the sinful self be put away, the new self now put on. All glory to the Son, who comes to set us free, with Father, Spirit, ever one, through all eternity. So we have a, uh, a king in Jesus who comes as a servant. And we have one who sets himself as king to not serve that way. In Judges chapter 9. Now Abimelech, the son of Jer Jeroboam, that is Gideon, went to Shechem to his mother's relatives and said to them and to the whole clan of his mother's family, Say in the ears of all the leaders of Shechem, which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jeroboam rule over you, or that one rule over you? Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh, and his mother's relatives spoke all of the words on his behalf in the ears of all the leaders of Shechem, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him seventy pieces of silver out of the house of baal Bareth, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless fellows who followed him. And he went to his father's house at Ophrah, and killed his brothers, the sons of Jeroboam, seventy men on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, was left, for he hid himself. 
All the leaders of Shechem came together, and all Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pillar at Shechem. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Gerizim and cried out and said to them, Listen to me, you leaders of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over them, and they said to the, uh, uh, to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Shall I leave my abundance, by which gods and men are honored, go hold sway over trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit and go hold sway over the trees? And the tree said to the vine, you come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my wine that cheers God and men and go hold sway over the trees? Then all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me a king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if you have acted in good faith and integrity when you made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Jeroboam and his house and have done to him as his deeds deserved, for my father fought for you and risked his life and delivered you from the hand of Midian, and you have risen up against my father's house this day and have killed his sons, 70 men on one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his female servant, king over the leaders of Shechem, because he is your relative. If then you have acted in good faith and integrity with Jeroboam and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from the leaders of Shechem and from Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and lived there because of Abimelech, his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this um, section on Abimelech is not encouraging. Uh, he is, uh, right, the son of Gideon. And, uh, and Gideon was complicated in many ways, as we saw last week. And he said one thing and did another many times. Such as uh, when Gideon says in uh, Judges chapter 8, when they, um, they said, uh, um, that it, men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us and your son and your grandson also, for you have saved us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you. The Lord, Yahweh, will rule over you. Then, uh, just to uh, clarify, Gideon uh, has 70 children. Um, and so, uh, it, as Pastor Nudor pointed out, not following the Lord's will for, uh, for him and, and these relationships. But he also has a, uh, a son named Abimelech. And Abimelech means, my father is king. Why would you name your child, my father is king? If you didn't hold some of that sentiment in yourself a little bit, uh, that I am the one who rules over this people. And as Abimelech then inherits this name and inherits this, um, you know, the, this connection to uh, the people of Israel and, uh, and the people of Shechem, because Abimelech, son of Gideon, right, the tribe of Manasseh, but his mother is a Canaanite who lived in this Shechem area. And, and from uh, this biblical account, we can gather, there's, there's never a good... Um, there's never a description of Israel, Joshua, taking out the uh, Canaanites in Shechem. They live side by side with these Canaanites in, in Shechem who are a, uh, a strong minority. And uh, it corrupts this Shechem region. And uh, it, the, the worship life of the Baals is, is uh, continued here in Shechem alongside the worship of Yahweh continually 
an issue. And so when Gideon dies, where's the power vacuum? Who's going to take control? Abimelech decides, I'm going to do it. And I've got the, uh, you know, I've got the clout because of who my father is. And I have these other people who can also stand behind me as my mother and my relatives get them to, to come behind me. They rally behind me. This desire, this pursuit of power and authority over others and this oppression uh, leads to um, Abimelech creating in himself an anti-judge. Right? God is using Gideon to be a judge for his people, to oversee them, rule over them, help them out of their oppression of the Midianites. But out of Gideon comes a son who doesn't fear Yahweh, doesn't follow the, the work of God in this people, and inside then of Israel becomes an oppressor of the people of Israel. So much so, he kills his brothers. Seventy of them he takes out so that he can hold the power himself. And then God saves one. Right? He saves Jotham. And Jotham here um, gets to stand uh, in judgment of his older brother and uh, and calls out the, the will of God, right? The, he gives this parable. It's the first parable we have in the Bible. And he, uh, he describes how um, trees would be fitting to oversee other trees, right? We have Israel. Israel would be fitting to oversee others of Israel. And he doesn't com condemn the monarchy here. Kind of have the first... First king here, um, one that is not sanctioned by God, but one who sets himself as king over others, um, over Israel, over people. And, uh, and yet, this one is referred to as a bramble. He's not one that God would use or choose or one that comes from his people because he comes from the outside. And if, I mean, if, it's, if this is pure, he's, I mean, he's saying tongue-in-cheek, right? If this is pure, you're going you're gonna to serve well. But it's not. Everyone knows that this is a sham. He just killed all his brothers to take over this throne. And it, it paints a picture for us of what it looks like to pursue a higher status, to pursue a, a, an advance, um, to pursue something great at the expense of so many others not seeing the devastation or not caring about the devastation that you leave in your wake. And Jotham is the voice of God here. He's not called a prophet, but he speaks in a, in a prophetic way where he says, if the things that you're doing are going to be God-pleasing, then God will bless them. But if they are not, then you will see the repercussions of your actions. This is what happens with sin, right? When we take the good things of God and we misuse them or we use them for ourselves at the detriment of others, then we see the brokenness that occurs out of that. When God is at work, he's bringing out the good things that we, uh, that we know he um, desires. When we take it into our hands and... You know, we see the deep corruption here. We see how broken it can become. And yet, God still will work in this way to show a difference between the work of Abimelech and what it means to take this on your own and, and to, you know, worship false gods in the midst of this, to, to have um, a, a divided heart. And Jotham is the voice of. God here as he speaks in understanding that shows that God has come to direct his people in one way, in one path, in one deliverance out of oppression, out of bondage, out of those who would claim authority and take it over you so that you would have rest for your souls, so that you would have peace in this land, so that you could worship under one ruler, Yahweh, who is overseeing his people. 
And we have a Savior who comes to fulfill this as Jesus comes as the King, as we sang in, in our hymn, that is uh, in a servant way where he lays down authority and dominion as he serves his disciples, as he serves people, as he serves at his own expense. As we think of our own uh, abilities uh, that God gives us, what do we do with them? As we think about the position that God has put us in, where do we use that? Who is that blessing? Is it us? Or is it the people that God has placed in our lives to bless? May God use us as his people to be ones who speak peace and justice and grace. As we, um, as we go through a, um, a sermon series here at St. Paul, I'm going to shift gears just a little bit. Um, as we go through a sermon series here at St. Paul on delight and how God delights in us and how he uses us as his own um, and calls us his delighted ones and we get to delight in his presence. Um, if you're not uh, a member of St. Paul or not worshiping with us uh, online, um, it's a sermon series that is written by our, uh, our pastor, uh, Justin Rosso. And, uh, and so we're going to use some of those elements in our devotions also this week. And uh, today, I just want to um, use a, a prayer from uh, from our our um, our sermon series that will uh, kind of focus us in what it means to look at uh, God as the one that we seek after, not some earthly authority or power, but solely delight, delighting in Him. So let's pray. As I grab the book from my bag. And bring it over to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you delight in me more than I could ever imagine. Thank you. Thank you for loving me and choosing me and taking delight in who I am and the unique person you made me to be. Increase my joyful curiosity as I look for what you are doing in me and through me. Give me a sense of excitement as I read your word and spend time with you in prayer. Cause me to delight in your presence as you take delight in spending time with me. Send the Spirit of Jesus to dwell in me, in my emotions, in my mind, in my soul in my senses, and in my will. Father, enable me more and more to delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.